how AI landscape is evolving and if you are someone who is very interested how you can start building products without having any prior knowledge of coding. There are two barriers that I primarily feel nowadays that would come in front of a candidate who is trying to get into AI product management. Can you help understand to the audience what all about AI product management? Even if you have no experience today, what are some of the tools which you can use to build on that experience? You take Flipkart as a product. Think of one or two use cases as to how you can integrate AI into it. AI not only just changing the way we are building products, also how it's actually changing the entire process of hiring product managers or working as a product manager there. Final round for the penultimate rounds. These things started showing cracks. Turned out to be a lot more luck than skill. And you might not know one of your revisions or iterations might change the entire user flow or the UI, how it would look like. The one thing that actually got me not going in the like final rounds or the penultimate rounds is the... I think from after this point, people would expect you to have the live prototype built as a case study and all. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sugat Nair and I am a product manager at Meta and I create content related to product management, interview and career. If you are here for the first time, don't forget to check out some of my previous videos where I have covered interview experience from more than 50 plus companies and have invited some of the great product leaders. Today, I am having a very interesting person who gonna be talking all about AI product management and in general how AI landscape is evolving and if you are someone who is very interested to learn about the space how you can start building products without having any prior knowledge of coding this video is a must watch for you without any further ado let me invite to our guest today uh, Mrityunjay Mohapatra who has been an AI product manager for uh, a couple of years and have worked across multiple companies welcome Mrityunjay hi Sugat and thank you so much for having me on the channel and hi everyone awesome Cool. You might know Mrityunjay from all of his LinkedIn and Reddit posts. He is pretty uh, famous in the in the segment and have been building a lot of AI products. So I think what would be great to uh, have this conversation with someone who have a proven experience and has been doing it for some time. And in this video, he's going to be talking all about his secrets of building great AI uh, products over here. But before we go there, Mrityunjay, Please introduce yourself to the audience. Would love to know a bit more about you. Absolutely. Thank you, man. Uh, I am Rituanjay Mahapatra and I've been a product manager for four years now. Uh, for the past couple of years, I have been specifically working on AI products. I worked in Sprinkler for roughly two and a half years. And for the past one year, I've been at Humantic AI. Currently, I have uh, like started working on some side projects full time. So that has been my journey so far. Uh, the products that I've worked on are primarily like reporting uh, products and in AI, I was working on uh, AI sales assistance tool. So that's that has been my experience so far. Amazing. Let's understand. I mean, we have been hearing about this AI product management from a um, lot of places. Can you help understand to the audience what is all about AI product management? Absolutely. So the way that term is used uh, from people to people varies a lot, but specifically what the industry wanted to define is that somebody who is uh, building or working on AI products. So like we had B2C product managers, we had B2B growth. So every uh, like prefix that you add to a product management domain, that's specifically the industry that they are working on or the product that they're working on. But over time, that uh, definition is shaping a little bit as to how people are trying to portray themselves as. Currently, there are two ways in which you can classify a product manager as an AI product guy, a person who is working on AI products or a person who is extensively using AI in the product uh, like management space. So that is the two ways in which uh, primarily we are defining AI product managers. Can you share some examples as you speak about this two different type of uh, AI product management? Absolutely. So the first part is basically what I had been doing. So I had been working on this AI sales intelligence tool and anybody who's working on AI products, let's say a product manager in uh, like, let's say open AI, working on the core, uh, like chat GPT product, probably uh, working on the model aspect, uh, working on uh, like building uh, new features ar around the like end product, you'll call that person an AI product manager. 
But let's suppose in the same open AI, there is a, another product manager who's working on monetization. That person isn't essentially a AI product manager who is working on AI products, but probably that person is using AI extensively in the workflow. Their day-to-day -day job involves uh, like using, let's say, ChatGPT or Claude to uh, like uh, research, to bring out new features. So this is how like the two people will separate from each other, but both of them like mostly are calling AI product managers uh, nowadays to themselves. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And I, I could relate uh, something from my experience as well. Uh, I mean, working in Meta that uh, there are a lot of ways we can automate and infuse AI in our workflows. And that's also predominantly is also captured as a term of AI product management. But I think thanks a lot for uh, sharing this entire, uh, you know, differentiations and all. And uh, a few days back, I was watching a pretty good video of Ankit and Akash Gupta, and they also have demystified the terminologies of AI product management. So I think uh, link in the uh, over here, uh, feel free to uh, refer to that for folks who want to understand more about AI product management. Uh, so let's keep moving. Uh, now, uh, imagine anyone, uh, a student right after graduating from college or a person who have already five years, six, six years of experience uh, working as a normal product manager. If they have want to pivot their career to AI product management space, what do you think are some of the key skills uh, needed for them? Right. So uh, I'll take you through my experience, right? So I was Perfect. working on a core B2B SaaS product. There was no AI at the moment. And if you uh, rea realize this thing that it was post GPT era when this AI thing came into picture entirely. So everybody or anybody like probably 99% of product managers were working on non-AI products before that. But currently you have seen like roughly 5 to 10% of people working on AI products and calling them AI product managers. So all of these people have shifted or come from a space which was non-AI. So uh, there are two barriers that I primarily feel nowadays uh, that would come in front of a candidate who's trying to get into AI product management. One thing is not having experience and I'll take you through both of them. How sure. to tackle it. Uh, one thing is uh, like not having the experience and second thing is not having the knowledge. So there are two specific barriers. Now, do you need specific knowledge to pursue AI product management? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, any industry, uh, if you're going to join as a product manager, let's say you're a fintech product manager, right? You need to have an, have some degree of knowledge about fintech. You can't get into, let's say, uh, like PayPal, for example, or you can't uh, get into um, like Stripe without having a, a knowledge about what that industry primarily is. So that is a core barrier. A lot of people uh, find themselves to be far away from the AI ecosystem completely. And that is something that one has to first like master a little bit because it's easier to uh, like gain. Second thing is experience. Experience is something that you won't have. But the way I recommend people doing it is probably do some internship. Uh, try to find people who are working uh, in AI product space. Reach out to them, ask them for a project or so. If nothing, they can at least write a recommendation to you. Uh, and you can at least show that to your like uh, next employer that you have in some capacity uh, like contributed to AI products and that might help you cross that barrier. So knowledge and experience, that will be your biggest barrier, the way to counter. Uh, learn about uh, models in general, learn about pricing in general, learn the like basics first. What is an AI model? Uh, how many models out, are out there? How can you write use cases for a current product? Let's say you take Flipkart as a product. Think of one or two use cases as to how you can integrate AI into it. That's a fantastic uh, like thing that you can show to your next employer because every AI company out there or every company that is trying to add AI into their core use case, they're also like clueless into how to integrate it. So if you come from a point of clarity where you can define that this is something that is gonna make sense and this is an AI feature, it's a great strength that uh, for you to have to show. So. Amazing. Yeah, I think uh, definitely those skills and, and trying it out. Uh, I think folks might be curious, how should I try out all of those things? So stay tuned till the end because Mrithinjay and we would also be doing some live demos where we're going to understand if even if you have no experience today, what are some of the tools which you can use to build on that experience? Cool. Let's keep moving. As as you mentioned, these are a few things which a person should be uh, have into their portfolio or a learning experience. Now, once they have it, right. next step is 
getting into a role, right? Getting into a role, either you can get into your existing companies, you can start targeting altogether new companies out of there. Absolutely. And which brings me to your post of, you mentioned a few days back, you got rejected, uh, mm-hmm. you know, while applying for interviewing for AI product management roles. Yeah. What are some of your learnings or what do you think how the interview is reshaping for this kind of AI product management roles? Absolutely, absolutely. So the primary essence of that post was like, I had been applying to uh, a variety of companies and primarily for AI product manager roles. It's like all the way from like early stage startups, like 10 member teams to all the way to uh, big tech, like public companies. And the one thing that actually uh, got me not going in the like final rounds or the penultimate rounds is the difference in expectation from the role itself for all of these companies. So what they expect out of the AI product manager or the product manager in that AI capacity is far uh, like distinct between all of these companies. In early stage startups, what I got to know is that they are expecting you to be somewhat of a superhuman type of capacity. You do A to Z everything, probably design it on your own. You code half the piece yourself. But as I... Uh, started reflecting the same things on a public uh, company. They actually countered me by saying that uh, we don't expect people to be our superhuman capacity. A product manager should primarily be focusing on problem identification rather than uh, like solutioning. So there is a distinct uh, difference in uh, what each of these companies are expecting. The JDs look absolutely same. And uh, as far as the tech rounds or the initial rounds were concerned, it was easy to go through that. But as soon as I uh, reached to the like final rounds or the penultimate rounds, these things started showing cracks. So like the expectation from the head of the product, the expectation from the person uh, like hiring manager, these things uh, started becoming a hindrance. So uh, if you even see that post, I primarily bash about uh, the final rounds, like how uh, it turned out to be a lot more luck than skill. But that's not entirely same. I have been reflecting on that. Uh, it is also skill. Uh, but the primary thing is that how well you research a company uh, before uh, applying for it and how well do you research the product or of that company as well. Like what are their skills? What do they do? What is their background? Do they have UX background? Do they have AI background? Do they have business background? And often enough, you'll find the same shaping out uh, in the company's product or uh, like functioning as well. Yeah, that's pretty amazing to know about uh, this varied interview experience because, uh, you know, we have been reading about Google bringing wife coding in the interviews. So uh, we really don't know uh, what's going to happen. And there was another interesting news about uh, from a Google head that they are completely getting away from PRDs. Yeah. What's your thought on those? Uh, how this AI not only just, uh, you know, changing the way we are uh, building products, also how it's actually changing the entire process of hiring product managers or working as a product manager there. Oh, absolutely. See, I have been preaching this for the last one year. My entire LinkedIn is based on this like narrative. And, um, but that particular post about that, uh, they are moving away from uh, like PRDs to prototypes. That was like a little bit uh, misunderstood, I would say. Also, like I also took it that way in which majority of people took. But like if you go through that product and the way a lot of like uh, like product commentators like uh, commented on that, uh, including like Akash Gupta and like Ankit Shukla, all of them wrote about it. And that commentary I found out to be very like uh, like a very clear thing that they are trying to say. But here is what I believe or how I am seeing uh, that shift or uh, like how that shift is happening to me. The basic thing to take out from that post was that, yes, we have to move towards prototyping. That's number one. It doesn't essentially take out PRDs as a primary like requirement document or spec document. But we have to move towards, like, we have to move towards prototypes. And the reason behind that is that with new technology coming in, and you have faster way to write down your specs. And now let me uh, explain what I mean by that. So ever since I started prototyping, it became much, much easier for me to even write down my product requirements document. What happens is that once you write down the initial spec, you can just put it across, let's say, lovable or bold. And once Bolt or Lovable creates a a prototype out of it, it immediately helps you see the gaps that were part of your spec document. So it's a very immediate feedback that you get on your PRD. Once you see that, 
you then analyze new like workflows on new user flows that probably you have been uh, like missing out on which was not part of your prd which should have been part of your prd or which should which should be part of your like later feature uh, like extended specification so that is where i believe the like head of product at google came from so you go from prds to prototypes you don't essentially eliminate prds but the moving away path is more about how you leverage this new technology to improve uh, your existing work so that's my take on it yeah thanks mrityunjay for clarifying that uh, it does make sense uh, prototyping is the main essence of what we are doing here um, and I, i think that's the uh, post also resonates when you spoke about slowly zomato ola i mean the all the case studies going to be outdated and there might be expectation in the pm interviews also to show us some kind of prototype and i'm very excited as we are having this conversation because this is what i want to show to all my viewers what does it mean to do prototyping uh let's start the quick exercise so for this there is no requirement for any of the viewers uh to know have any kind of prior coding experience just watch out this demo and hopefully it would be a great learning for me as well as the viewers because Mrityunjay has been building really awesome products and has been launching it and selling as well. So let's try to learn. If you are really curious all about AI space, how to build products, this is the uh you know segment for you. 